In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. So I'd like to thank you all for coming and uh, responding to the call, for receiving um, Jesus today, for gathering for a celebration of Mass. I truly believe if we want a healthy culture, a healthy society, our marriages should be strong. Marriages are not built on your opinion of each other. Marriages are not built on a man or on a woman. Marriages are built on Jesus himself. Jesus shall not be a visitor in the house. Jesus should be the foundation where the house should be built on him. Every man is a gate to the house. Every Gora is a gate to the house. And that gate should be strong should be powerful, should be blocking the devil's tricks to come into the house and destroy the marriage. And every woman, every mother is the beating heart of the house. And that heart should be nourishing, should be flourishing, and should be strong in the faith. And we can achieve that by depending on Christ himself. We can achieve that by looking at Jesus and what we can learn from His sacrifice on the cross. We have a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is not loved because he was a tax collector. During his time, he lived in Jericho. Jericho, during Jesus' time, was the Las Vegas of that time. Jericho was a sin city. And this Zacchaeus lived in that city. He was hated because he took money from the Jews and gave that money to the Romans. But he was rich. The gospel says he was rich. Now Zacchaeus at a certain point of his life realized money will not bring him happiness. He thought to himself, even if I go on vacation, and indulge in many comforts, money will not give me satisfaction. Zacchaeus thought to himself, if I throw the biggest hafla for my wedding, but money will not give me marriage. Money will give me hafla, but marriage will not. Zacchaeus thought to himself, if I get sick, I will get every single doctor of this world because I got the money but money will not give me health. Zacchaeus thought to himself, I can buy the most expensive watch on planet Earth. I can look amazing, buy every brand name given, but neither the watch, the watch will not give me time or the clothes will give me dignity, will not cover me. Zacchaeus thought to himself, money, with money I can buy the most expensive mattress on planet Earth. Like, what is it, memory foam, right? That you can control with your remote control and something like that. He thought to himself, they did not have that. But he thought to himself, I can buy things like that. I can buy the nicest mattress, but money will not buy me sleep. There was something lacking in Zacchaeus' life. Now, he had to take that initiative. He had to move out of his house. He had to look and evaluate himself, say like, what am I doing with my life? Okay, I'm hated by everyone. No one likes me anymore because I've been defrauding people and I'm rich. I have every means to be comfortable. I can lock my door, I can be in my house, and I can just be happy with whatever I have and I don't care about anything. He did not think like that. He realized what he is, he realized what he has, and everything that he is, and everything that he had is not enough for him. He had to get out of his house. Out of his house. He had to take that move. Now, the Gospel, St. Luke is very smart in putting his words together. It says Zacchaeus, he had to go through the crowd, the same crowd that hated him. And he had to go where, where Jesus was to pass. 
and who ha he had to climb up into a sycamore tree. Now, all these details are for a reason. All these details are mentioned for a reason. A lot of times our marriages are like that. A lot of times you have ideas about your spouse. You have built certain ideas about your spouse. You have thought to yourself, maybe the more money I have, I become, I'll be comfortable, I'll be happy. Just, just make money, I want you to make money, I demand to make money, and then money will buy me happiness. Where did that get us to? Money is important, don't get me wrong. Jesus is not against money. But when money becomes God, controlling your love, controlling your relationship, controlling your relationship with your children, controlling your relationship with your friends and everyone around you, then there is a problem. Something is taking control. Now, in order for you to meet Christ, you have to go through the crowd. And the crowd can be your own ideas. You have carried so many ideas about each other. The crowds can be people that are probably trying to break up your relationship. The crowds can be your all, the, the whole ideas that you had built about each other and you may think to yourself, the only solution to this is divorce. The word divorce should not be on the lip of Christians. Divorce is like People, I'm surprised when people say, well, Abuna, we're going to get divorced because we don't love each other anymore. Divorce is like, with that associated with, with love, lack of love, is like a car without gas. It's like you selling your car because it doesn't have gas. You can fill your relationship when you get out of your house, when you get out of your comfort zone, when you actually sometimes you need to be crucified for the person you love. The issue today is we are unwilling to get out of our comfort zone and to go through the crowd our own ideas about each other because we are so stubborn. <laughs> and we need to go through the crowd Every idea we have, everything that we had built about each other, every time I gave ear to someone to talk about my wife or to talk about my husband, and actually I am listening to him, them, or her, and I'm okay with it. All these things are distractions. Crowds are in your way, in your path, where to Jesus. Now he goes through the crowds and, and St. Luke says he was short. He had to climb up a tree to see Jesus. A lot of times in order for our relationship with the Lord to flourish, we need to rise above the standards of the world. A lot of times for your relationship to be strengthened together, you need to rise above what the world is telling you. A lot of times, for you to meet Christ, you need to rise above what everything has been said about marriage. Today's world, by the way, the attacks today are against marriages. Marriage is getting attacked. Now, the first thing that God established, God did not tell Adam, Adam, I want you to get me an altar, get clothed and I want you to celebrate mass for me. No. He looked at Adam, says, Adam, it looks like you need a wife. And ever since, every husband is so happy about it. So he told him, it's like, he created marriage the first thing because without marriage, without healthy marriages, we cannot exist. Like, spiritually. Without healthy marriages, we cannot be nourished. Without healthy marriages, we cannot get closer to Christ. So you need to rise above the standards of the world. What are the standards of the world today? So many. If you are struggling, 
in your relationship, go find joy in something else. Substitute the anger with something or someone else. If your marriage is not going well, well, go to your in-laws or go to your mama's house and sleep there. It's okay. Separate yourself from your family, from your responsibility. The world tells you that. If you're going through hard times, well, leave the house and don't come for two days. It's okay. The world tells you it's okay. Go chill. It's not about chilling. It's about holding your spouse's hand and come together and kneel before the Lord. Lord, 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 you gave me my wife. Lord, you gave me my husband. And we want you to get involved in our relationship. Bessa, enough of our own ideas. Zacchaeus thought all of these things that he had were not enough for him. They were not giving him the satisfaction. By the way, a lot of people may call you crazy. People did not like Zacchaeus going through them. Probably they were hitting him. They were hating on him. They were probably making him feel miserable. A lot of times people may tell you that. May, people may tell you, well, guess what? Your wife does not deserve you. You're better than her. Your husband does not deserve you. You're better than him. And, and these are the crowds, the crowds, the crowds. Who are you listening to? Who are you giving your ear to? Zacchaeus was on a mission. He was moving from his comfort zone to meet Jesus, but he had to go that path. He had to go through the crowds to meet Christ. And once he climbed up above the standards of the world, once he climbed up above his own ideas, his own knowledge about, about himself, about everyone around him, that was the time where Jesus met him. And he thought he was looking for Jesus, but actually, in fact, Jesus was looking for Zacchaeus to come to his house. Now, if you want to meet Jesus, if you want to welcome Jesus, Jesus is looking for you. He's the good shepherd who searched for us all the time, and he wants us back. Now, once Zacchaeus met Jesus, everything changed. He was a new person. He was a new man. Not only him, but also his house. Jesus comes, invites Actually, Jesus invites himself to his house. Very Chaldean of him. Right? We invite ourselves. We like, he's Middle Eastern, just like us. You know, he likes to invite himself. Zacchaeus and Chotacha. Zacchaeus, come down. You know, I'm going to come to your house. Not only to drink chai with you. I don't care about that. I shall come to your house to give you a new life. Now, whatever you're going through, marriage, marriages are difficult. Yes, I understand. I'm not a married man, but I know because I was raised in a family with a married man and a married woman, right? But with Jesus, nothing is impossible. Everyone talked about him. Everyone talked about Jesus and talked about Zacchaeus. When you receive Jesus in your house, people may look at you weird. People may not accept the idea that you are right now infusing your relationship with Christ. People may not like the idea that knew you. People will remember you by your past. Jesus remembers you by your present, who you are today. People did not like Zacchaeus or Jesus. But Zacchaeus did not care. All he had, it's like, well, I'm a new man. That's it. I'm done. I'm done with my old life. I'm not a prisoner. I'm not a prisoner to the crowds. I'm not a prisoner to my money. I'm not a prisoner to my sin. I'm not a prisoner to my ideas. I'm not a prisoner to anyone. Jesus set me free. Jesus set me free. And I think this is what we need today. We need a revolution to bring Jesus back not on our walls, to bring Jesus back to our hearts. We need a revolution 
to bring a priority to the teachings of Christ in our relationships, in our faith, in our encounter with each other, in your relationship with each other. What is the dominant thing? If you had built ideas about each other, it's time to let them go. It's time to say, Jesus, I need to be a new person. Bessa, enough of these things. I need a new relationship. I need a new heart. I need a fresh set of eyes. I need a fresh set of ears. I need to put, put my spouse, my children as a priority. Now, Zacchaeus is a perfect example for us. But he had to take that initiative. He had, he had to move in order for him to change. Now, my brothers and sisters, it's so beautiful to have you here. It's so amazing to have you here. But we have so many, so many, many more married couples in Michigan. We have so many married couples that are struggling. We had so many married couples that are going through hard times. We, had, we have so many married couples that are affecting the lives of their children, are not setting an example, a perfect example, a beautiful example for their children. I got to tell you, where are you? Why are you so lost? Now we are always, our eyes are always on our neighbor's lawn. Our neighbor's lawn is so green. So this time, to water your own grass. <laughs> it's time to water your own grass. And the only water that we can have is that water of Jesus. Please come back to Christ. If you want your relationship to stay strong, to stay flourished, to stay nourished, you got to depend on Christ, not on yourselves. If you want your relationship to always stay content, if you want for your gora or bakhta to fill your eye, for your husband and wife to fill your eye, have Jesus as your foundation. Who do you think gave you to each other? That Christ Himself. So today is an opportunity for all of us. Husbands, husbands, I ask you, I beg you today, when you kneel, thank God for your wives. Your wives are a gift from heaven to you. The wives like that. Wives, my dear sisters, when you kneel before God today, thank the Lord for your husbands. I know sometimes they're hard to deal with. I know, I'm a man and I know that. But it's okay, thank God for them. They were given by God to you. Imagine if we live in a world where husbands think about their wives being a gift from heaven. Imagine if we live in a world where wives will think about their husbands as a gift from heaven. Honestly, we will not have the problems we have in today's world. Today, it's never too late. Let's get back to Him. Let's listen to Him. Let's seek Him from all our heart. And if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. Amen.